This is Bosse from University of Science and Technology of China. And I, today I will re, uh, report some progress on an uh, optical vector magnetometer based on multiple cells and dual bell bloom optic pumping. We know it is desirable to obtain not only the magnitude but also the direction of a um, vector magnetic field. Of course, there are several methods already existed to realize uh, uh, vector measurements. For example, when work from shield tells us we can use a pump up self magnetometer with kind of feedback to get uh, the vector information. They also point out that uh, the, the noise is limited by the feedback kind of source. The second work uses uh, uh, a pumping uh, pump substance with radio frequency modulation. This means we need to uh, add, uh, we need to apply an additional uh, field. So these two methods are both not all optical. Uh, the third work uses light shift to simulate the magnitude of uh, field modulation and realize an all optical ma vector magnetometer for the first time. And they also point out that the light shift will increase the noise level. And the fourth work uses a single beam bell bloom optic pumping with pump beam direction perpendicular to the bias field direction. So this means we need to know the bias, uh, bias field direction roughly at first. So what we want to do is to realize a new vector magnetometer, which is an all-optical magnetometer with high sensitivity and large working range. So multiple cells plus two bell optic pumping will meet all these requirements. Firstly, we introduce a hurry out cavity inside the atom cell with 22 reflections. And we also standardize the fabrication of a, the fabrication of a multi-pass cell using a nautic bonding method. And together with a 3D printed platform, we can get rid of optical adjustment. And we know as for a single beam bell bloom optic pumping, the pump beam is modulated at the normal frequency of the atoms. So for an arbitrary direction of the magnetic field, which is defined by Xi Z and beta X Y, we can extract several information from the power beam using locking amplifier. There can be X Y uh, signals or R and theta signals. They're just the equivalent. So here the theta is the first difference of the modulation signals in the power beam compared with the reference. When we read a theta <coughs> value from the locking amplifier, we cannot know the exact uh, direction of the magnetic field, but it do tells, tells us that, it do be, be able to tell us that the magnetic field must be a, along a curve. For example, if we read theta as 27 degrees, it tells us that the magnetic field must al must be along the red curve on the sphere. So in order to know the, know the exact uh, magnetic field direction, we just need another curve to make a cross with the red curve. And to get the, the, uh, the other line, we need a second bell pumping beam, which is perpendicular to the former one. So this is why we use two bell optic pumping. Here, we applied another pump beam along the x direction and probed by the same probe beam. So here comes the problem. How can we separate the two pump beam signals with the same probe beam? Uh, to solve this problem, we filled the atom cell with, uh, with the rubidium at 85 and rubidium at 7 at the same time, so that we can, mod we can modulate the the two pump, pump beam at uh, the normal frequencies of zubidium at five and zubidium at seven, respectively. In this way, we can demodulate the pump beam at different frequencies. 
at different cases, various cases, use two login amplifier. For example, if they, they set at 27 degrees from the first log, from the first login amplifier, we get the uh, the red curve on the sphere, and uh, we set a set value at 150 and uh, 44 degrees from the second locking amplifier, we get the black curve on the sphere. So the cross point is just the <coughs> direction of the magnitude field. And uh, we perform our experiment in, inside a five layer metal uh, shells. And the atom cell contains rubidium at five and rubidium at, at seven. And, uh, 400 ton nitrogen as the buff gas. And the two, bell, two pump beam are along the Z axis and X axis, and the pump beam is along the Y axis. And to perform our vector, in, vector in magnetometer, we need to cal calibrate the relationship between the phase output theta <coughs> with the angles psi and beta. Here is the data from the first locking amplifier. And we just generate a dead path for such a relationship. Uh, every line in this figure is uh, acquired when we fix the psi z and scan beta xy. In this figure, we plot such a relationship between theta and beta xy in, in, for different psi z from 10 degrees to 40 degrees and then to 90 degrees, and then to 170 degrees. We can generate a similar dead path for the second locking amplifier. But the lines in this figure is acquired <coughs> the one we fix Xi X and scan bet YZ. So for the first locking amplifier, we scan around the Z axis. And for the second locking amplifier, we scan around the x axis. And then, after we generate the data base, we read a theta from the first locking amplifier as 189 degrees. We can, we can draw a line using the data base, and then it gives us the red curve on the sphere. And at the same time, we can read a theta as 166 from the locking amplifier 2. We draw another line, and it gives us another curve. So the cross point of, the cross point of these two curves just uh, fix the direction of the magnetic field. Here, the xi z equals 80 degrees, and xi x is 20 degrees. With xi z and xi x, we just know the direction of the magnetic field. Another question we are concerned about is if the phase output theta will change with different with the, with the magnitude of the field. So from this we can we can, we can see that the phase change with the B magnitude, which is bigger than we simulate the, which is bigger than that we simulate for a single isotope. So we think this change mainly comes from the interaction between rubidium at five and rubidium at seven. So we can see that the phase change faster when the B magnitude is less than 100 milligaussian and more slowly when more than 100 milligaussian. So this is reasonable since the Lama frequencies between the BDM at five and the BDM at seven increase with the growth of the B magnitude. This means the interaction between them will go weak. <coughs> we are also concerned about the dead zones of our <coughs> vector magnetometer. From this fig, which I have showed you before, we can see that we can't get a certain better XY when size Z equals 90 degrees, just as the green line shows. So this means the plane XY is a dead zone for us. And sim similarly, plane YZ is also a dead zone. And when we rotate this device uh, around the X axis for 
uh, 90 degrees, the data zones change to B, um, plane XZ and plane YZ. So let's think about how, what will happen when we combine the two cavity in one atom cell. So we can say with different group of pop beam and pop beam, the, pop, the plane XY and plane XZ will be no longer dead zones. But the plane YZ is still troublesome. So let's say the plane YZ. And fortunately, we have another group of pump beam and pump beam. It's pump beam one and pump beam one and pump beam two. For the same pump beam one, we can compare the, uh, sig the signal amplitude demodulated from pump beam one and pump beam two. We can get the direction since we can get the, direct, the exact direction since uh, it's, pro, it's, it, it's projecting on pump beam one and pump beam two are different. And uh, we also apply uh, multiple cells inside uh, in a nuclear spin magnetometer. As we can see from the spin noise spectroform, the light width is broadened greatly. <coughs> Vanzino, uh, greatly Vanzino atoms exist. So it, it will be quite necessary and meaningful to introduce a multiple cell to improve the sensitivity. This is the figure of our nuclear spin <coughs> magnetometer setup. And the right figure shows us that the sensitivity of a rubidium magnetometer with Zeno can still be less than 100 femtotesla per screw red hertz. So in conclusion, we realize an all optic magnetometer based on multiple cells and two bell bloom optic pumping. And we separate the two bell bloom, op, uh, bell bloom beam signals by using a single beam and two rubidium isotopes. And we are working on systematic effects and applying the multiple cells in a Zeno nuclear spin magnetometers. And this is our group. Uh, it's me, it's Chen Peng, and, uh, and, uh, and it's our boss, Dong Sen. Thank you. <laughs>